but you have the self-awareness to realize that wrestling doesn't last forever. And not everybody does. There's a lot of people that go, I've always loved wrestling. I've always wanted to be a wrestler. Wrestling is all I know. And then they get let go or you know have a bad injury and they go, oh crap, now what? Yeah. So it's just, I've always been like that where like I was taught very, I was taught very well by Lance Storm. And he preached right away of like, look, be smart with your money. Like, yes, it's exciting when you start making good money, but it does not last forever. So be smart with it. And I went, okay. So like, what exactly does that mean? Like just- It means it? don't buy the Top Gun helmet. Well, if that's <laughs> that. <laughs> Let's not go that far. Um, <laughs> But like, you know, I, when I, honestly, when I, I thought of it, I was like, does that just mean save your money? Because like when it sits there, whatever, um, I was never a big, like, I, I was just never big into school. Like I just, it didn't interest me. And all I wanted to do is go to wrestling school. So I kind of just like blasted through it. Um, when I got out and, and once I kind of tried to figure out what Lance meant by be smart with your money, man, I wish they taught that in school. Like I wish they taught how taxes work. And I wish how they taught how real estate works and stock market and all this stuff where like your money, when you save it, it's not just safe in your bank account, making, you know, 0.02% interest. Like you have, once you get money it, that what's it, whatever that those, it's so funny. Like, as you get older, you realize the sayings that are around forever are around forever for a reason. Yeah. Um, like it takes money to make money. It really does. Like once you get a little bit of capital, you can easily make money. It's insane. You just have to know how. So I would kind of like branch out and go, all right, uh, I heard real estate's big. So let's look at this. And then all of a sudden you talk to a couple of people who do it, which Fandango, he's a real estate master. So he kind of taught me some stuff and I went, oh, I tried it, did it. Cool. What else can I do? Oh, now you have rental places. Now you do this. Now you do this. And I'm going, oh, so I still have the money. I'm just moving it over into like other places as like little piggy banks, just waiting for me when I want to take it all out. Um, but now I'm using other people's money to pay for my stuff instead of my own money. And then, uh, and which a lot of people freak out because they like seeing their bank account build up. And then when they see it like kind of go away, if you buy a you know down payment on a house, there's $30,000 that goes and you're like, oh God, what just happened? Yeah. But then you realize, no, it's still there. And now someone's actually paying and now they're paying you money to use that house. Like that was so interesting to me finding that out. And I went, okay. So now I have WWE and I have rental stuff. So that's two forms of income. And I started kind of like researching this stuff and going like millionaires, how do millionaires have money? Cause like, do, do they just have jobs that pay like millions of dollars? Cause that's hard to get. Mm -hmm. And it was like, no, Re millionaires have like seven to 10 streams of income. And I went, how do you have seven to 10 like jobs? How is that possible? It's not the case. You have to find stuff. So like all of a sudden, then I was researching stocks. I was literally sitting in there in bed at like four in the morning reading stocks. And we're like, okay, cool. All right, cool. Trying it, trying it, trying doing this. And I went, oh, okay, well there's three. All right. And then just slowly finding these like interests um, to, to build everything outside of the ring for when that day came that my phone rang and they said, hey, we don't need you anymore. And I went, cool. Because if I didn't have any of this stuff and that phone rang, I would have freaked the hell out. I would have gone, oh God. I thought this was going to last forever. Where am I going to get my next paycheck? Oh God. Um, but luckily I kind of prepared and I got ready for this. And when it happened, it was literally like the shortest conversation of all time. Hey man, what's up? Uh, bad news. Unfortunately, I have to let you go. Okay, cool. Do you have any questions? No, not really. When are you up? September 20 something. Okay, cool. Thanks man. Bye. Like, cool. Wow. Now, and now what do I do? What do I do? I immediately started streaming again. I immediately fired up my pros and tees. I immediately fired up everything. And just like you go into hustle mode and I'm okay with it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas, like I said, and, and like you said, there's a lot of people that just put all their eggs in the wrestling basket and you're one injury away, or you are one phone call away from putting your income from X amount of dollars to zero mm -hmm. and having zero income freaks the hell out of me. So, Is it because you were so close to being released so many other times, like the stories you just told that this um, time around you just kind of went, yeah, all right. Finally happened. I'm okay with that. No, I mean, it, it was, but it was also like, uh, I mean, one, like, you know, I've been in WWE for 11 years, so that's yeah. very, very lucky to do that. Um, and I also was very smart with my money to where now the income part wasn't so much like a big worry to me. Um, now it was just kind of like a, I understand where they're coming from to, to let me go. Like, it's, it's just business. That's it. You can't take it personally. You'll be like, what did I do wrong? Or blah, blah, blah. You can't. Sometimes you just make too much money or sometimes they go, Hey, we don't need you right now. 
it doesn't mean you're gone forever. Like how many times do we see people get released and they'll come back? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, once you're in the system, you're in the system. It's just how it yeah. goes. Um, but yeah, I think like, I always had a goal for myself when I got hired. Um, and I've said it a bunch, like I was preparing to get fired the day I got hired. Like as soon as I got hired, I went, cool, let's start preparing. Like what, how do we got to set ourselves up here for the future? Cause there's a lot of life to live after wrestling. Mm -hmm. Um, and I immediately just kind of like started to make a plan, got ready and, uh, just slowly kind of like, I guess was just ready for, I, I remember looking at contracts. So I got my first contract and I went like, okay, like once you, you have like a developmental contract, which I think was like three years or five years or something. Um, but then when I signed my main roster contract, I went, okay, I got three years, realistically, perfect world. If I last three years, I got three years. I don't want to have to sign another one. I want to be able to like, if I'd like to, I'll sign it. But if I really don't want to, I want the freedom to not have to sign that. Hmm. And then by the time three years came up, I went, oh man, I don't have to, but I, I could. I mean, things are going okay. So I just signed the next one and I went, cool. And then like, by the time the next one rolled around, a very different scenario where I went, look, man, like you don't need me. I'm going to leave kind of thing, uh, which is kind of what I was, I was, uh, you know, I've always kind of preached, like, if you are not happy in your life, then you got to change it. You have to. And at that moment in time, I was not happy. And what I was told was literally like, sorry, all we can give you is more money. And I said, I've been really smart with my money. I don't need more money. Like I, I, I'm telling you, I go to the airport and I turn around and I don't go to work because I'm not happy in my, which I'm not happy at work, which was more of a reflection of, I wasn't happy in my life. So everything kind of follows. Um, and I just kind of went, look, like, I don't need this. And that was when I had the conversation to go back to NXT and everything else. But I was really ready to leave right then. And because I kind of accomplished my goal of, like I said, having that freedom to, to not sign that contract. And, and that's my main thing that I always preach is like, when you sign that contract, you know exactly what you're signing up for. If you are not okay with it, please do not sign. Please do not sign. Go somewhere else. Do not sign that contract because now once you're in it, now like it's kind of on you. Like, you know what this is. It is not a surprise anymore, especially now like maybe 10 years ago when I got signed or whatever, but now everything about the contracts are so widely known. Like everybody just either, you know, as soon as they get fired, they tell everything or whatever, but you know so much about what's in the contract, what is probably entails in your years that you're going to work for this company. If you don't want to do it, please do not sign. If it's not going to make you happy, don't sign it. Well, what's so impressive with what you've done is you've been able to make so much money regardless of what your name was or where you worked, you know, with real estate and stocks mm -hmm. and just great investments. I think a lot of people go, all right, I need to take the character and the name that I've built in this company and then make money off of that. Yep. And you basically went, no, I'll just buy some properties, have rental properties, invest, look up stocks, look at you now. Well, so this is the funny thing. And like, it's funny talking about it. Cause it sounds like I'm like this like multimillionaire. I'm not, I live comfortably, but I have like my future set up, you know what yes. I mean? Um, whereas like you said, like a lot of people just put every single egg they have in that wrestling basket and they just assume that wrestling is going to take care of them for the rest of their life. Don't do that. Um, where on the other side of it, this is my favorite part, because if you mention like anything about money or like, oh, like you're happy with your career. You're not even winning championships or you're not getting pushed or you're not in a storyline, but you're perfectly fine to sit in catering and collect your money and blah, 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 blah. One, just because I was in a company and I understood how the system worked and I wasn't sitting there banging my head against the wall going, why aren't they giving me titles? Why aren't they using me? Doesn't mean that you're complacent. It doesn't mean that you're content. It doesn't mean that you don't work hard. It just means that like I said, I could go in every single day and I could pitch an idea. The company it is that the company that hired me, it is hundred percent their call if they do any of my ideas or not. When I say that, like we get hired to sit on the bench, doesn't mean that you're not hardworking. It doesn't mean that you're not trying to do more or that you want to do more. It just means that you're sitting there and everything goes in cycles. Nobody can stay on top forever. That's just how it goes. And if they do, like someone's on top and they go, well, why isn't this person on top? And then when that person goes to the top, then they go, well, why isn't this person on top? <laughs> Not everybody can be on top. It doesn't mean that you're content. It doesn't mean that you don't care. There's a very big difference between like bitching and complaining about things uh, and then being disappointed in things. Like I could, I, I could very much say like, man, I wish this would have happened or I, I wish this would have happened. I could be disappointed with that, but I can't sit here and go, man, 
I wasn't given everything I was owed. Like in reality, I wasn't owed anything, man. I was very lucky out of thousands of people in the world who want to work for a big company. I got to work there for a long time. Yeah. And in reality, which this is the funny part too, a lot of people will go, oh man, but your career sucked. And I'll be like, okay, did it? Like, go back, go back and watch my match, my fatal four-way match at NXT. I will hold it up against any match that's ever happened. And that, the, the match at the time is, is one of my favorite things. Great opponents, great crowd, fun time. Uh, I'm the only guy in WWE history who ever got to wrestle Liger. Like, they don't just hand that to you if you suck. You know what I mean? Like, there's certain things. If I look back at my career, my career has been awesome. Yeah. And a lot of people wish that they could have a career like me. Where at the same time, a lot of people have had really, really good careers. So you can't look and go, man, this guy never won a title. Man, this guy never this. Oh, they didn't know how to book this. Cool. Like, it is what it is. But at the same time, I, I, I'm very, very happy with everything that I've accomplished. And now at 33 years old, if I really wanted to, I could say I'm retired. I could go, yeah, this is about as retired as I'm going to be. I'm going to run the school. I'm going to teach people. I have no surgeries. I'm very, very healthy. Like that is a good accomplishment for me. And in the end, overall, more than anything, wrestling is always just wrestling. It is off to the side, but you have to be happy in life. And I'm very happy in my life. I love my life. I think it's yeah. great. Yeah. You know I mean, no matter what people want to say, I'm very happy. Hey, it's Chris, and thank you so much for checking out this video on my brand new YouTube channel, CVV Clips. As the name suggests, it's a place where I'm gonna post clips from some of my favorite interviews. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit subscribe and also check out these videos right here. YouTube thinks you might like them.